it was um, you get phone calls from your agents and they tell you, you know, they want to, you know, they want to see the tape for Bob Marley and, and they make it sound like, you know, there's this real interest for you and you, I didn't believe that. Um, and then, yeah, they sent the scenes over and I, um, there was a scene that involved singing and, and playing the guitar, which I obviously mm. threw in the bin. I didn't do, um, because I was convinced that's how I would not get the job. So I just I just picked one of them, um, one of the simpler scenes where he is in the studio talking to the band about the the meaning and the meaning of the song, the song that they were creating, and the message in the song, and how he was trying to inspire the troops, um, and it felt very active, and it felt. It felt, it felt like a good scene to grab the attention of whoever's watching, because it was active. So I just picked that scene and focused on that scene and, and uh, I spent the weekend just trying to wrap my head around the patois a little bit. Um, and I sent a note over before sending the audition saying, this is nowhere near the finished product, but this is just an offering of like where I'm at now. And these are all the things that are going to be involved. Um, I was also auditioning knowing that the family were going to watch the tape the next day, probably. So there was a huge motivation there. Um, and then, yeah, I sent it and, and, uh, and then I was in, I was, I was, I was flying over to meet everyone, you know, within a week or two. I guess that was the pro, that was the audition, you know, it was, um, it was very quick. And then it all started moving, you know. Well, I sent an audition tape. Well, actually, no, tell a lie. I met up with Ronaldo really early on when I heard that the film was being made and they may be casting Rita. Um, and <laughs> I was really honest with him and said, I'm Jamaican, this story needs to be told properly. What are your plans? And I really grilled him. And luckily he wasn't scared by that. And I was able to send a tape through from home. And after that, um, I just sat with myself for a bit, had conversations with Kingsley, was able to get in contact with him. And then myself and Kingsley had a chemistry read whereby we had a few scenes, you know, back to back where we almost workshopped it in a room. We we acted it out, we had the chairs and we were, I was like semi in costume. Um, and yeah, I think the following week I had the role. Well, very fortunately I didn't audition for this. It was um, it was a call my agents got from um, from the production and, and it was a really lovely call to get. You know, it was early-ish on in, in the casting process and um, there was a long time where it wasn't quite, sh we weren't sure if I was gonna be able to fit it in because of dates, kind of clashes, and um, Plan B, um, Jeremy uh, Kleiner and others were brilliant in making a window for me to be able to come home, sh rehearse a play and go back to Jamaica. So the jigsaw puzzle was a complicated one, but managed we managed to make it happen, which was great. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, my initial thought when I got the call was like, a Bob Marley biopic? What? That's never happened. This is insane. Of course, I want to be a part of it, especially, especially since um, I heard that the Marley family were on board and were supporting. And actually, not more, more than that, they were on set. Like Ziggy Marley was on set every day with us. And so, yeah, all of those ingredients. Kingsley Benadire, huge fan. He's a genius. Um, Lashana Lynch, equally. So, yeah, I was very touched and privileged to to be invited onto this this very exciting journey. Yeah. We, we went on a year-long search or more, um, so it was, it was very difficult. Um, you know, it's hard to find Bob Marley. There's only one of them. Um, and we weren't looking for Bob, we were looking for somebody that can channel the essence of Bob. And so that was, uh, it just took time. It took time, like anything. And uh, I think, yeah, in the 11th hour, when you think maybe it's not possible, um, maybe it's not gonna happen, uh, Kingsley, t Kingsley Benadire's tape showed up. <laughs> and mm -hmm. luckily for me, there was, uh, yeah, there was the, the possibility that making this film could actually happen. And so um, I saw that on his tape from the very first time I saw it. I thought, okay, 
there's something special here. Um, he's got the look, he's got the vulnerability, he's got the charm, he's got the presence. Um, so it was love at first sight. It was definitely a lot of, it, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was love. It was love yeah. that it was possible. It was possible that the, the light bulb goes off and says, okay, can I imagine him? You know, he's got short hair and can I imagine him with dreads? Can I, you know, it's, it's, you have to do some mental math. Um, you know, who is he? What's his background? Uh, can he sing? All, all those other things that, that come into play in the filmmaking process. But there was enough of a baseline that, that felt like um, we can go after it. Men and people will fight you down When you see your light Tell them skipper Let me tell you if you're not wrong Where everything is all right <laughs> Boom! I got a guitar I started listening to his music um, I started to uh, transcribe a lot of his interviews um, just to understand what he was saying. And I guess the the Jamaican, the patois really was the part of the process that was, you know, the most important in a way, because it's how Bob speaks. It was to, to find his voice, you have to understand the language. Um, so we, we spent a long time. It, it, it never ended, it never stopped. It was, uh, it was the, the focus on the authenticity of the language was something that um, I started doing straight away and we were still working it when we were filming the last scene in the movie. Um, we had, you know, I think the dialect team was maybe, including the Jamaicans that came to my house to help me at the beginning, it was probably eight or nine you know, people who are on the language. Um, I had a lot of coaches on this. I've never had so many coaches. Um, so it was a lot of help. Uh, but yeah, there were, there were lots of, there were lots, there was a lot to do with this one because Bob's a musician and, uh, and it's a foreign language film with no subtitles. So it was a, it was a different kind of work. Yeah, I've, we've met a, a few times now. We met, probably like a sit down talk twice at home, um, relaxed, we joked, we laughed, we we ate most importantly. And um, and we spoke about her love for Bob, which is my, you know, important research from her. And then I saw her a couple of times on set in Jamaica, which was wonderful to be playing Mrs. Marley and have her there actually in Jamaica was surreal. Um, so yeah, I was able to you know capture her her essence, her feeling, her energy in order to make sure that I was representing her well and authentically portraying a story that you know has so much to it. But in the small slice of Bob Marley's life that we're telling here, I wanted to ensure that hers was was worth the telling, and you know was was something that people would remember that she would be happy for and the family would be proud of. I have now met Chris. I met him last week uh, in person at the Jamaican premiere. Um, he sat in front of me or just slightly to the side of me in the theater, in the cinema, um, which was very strange because you know, I was trying to watch the movie, but of course I was more interested in how he was responding to the movie, especially in my scenes. So I spent most of the film watching him watch me play him and seeing if he approved. I think he did. He came up to me afterwards and, and we, you know, we shared a, a lovely conversation where he said he liked the movie and that was a relief. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of preparation, you know, you, you read, there's so much information out there about Chris Blackwell and Bob Marley, obviously. Um, and it, the, the challenge is to, is to kind of sift through all the information and try and find this man, the essence of this man, you know, because no one's really interested in watching a Wikipedia page come to life. People want to see the kind of the personality and the essence. And so um, reading his book was very important, obviously, but um, hearing from Neville Garrick, who's, as I said, on set every day and was a great friend of Chris's and hearing from him the kind of temperament that Chris has and, um, and just finding something, you know, with Kingsley, a quiet affection between these two men, a trust. Um, 
a love for each other and for the music. Um, that was kind of the way in, I think.